The Gospel for this Sunday, Pentecost 3, is taken from St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd was following him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, her heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, Jesus said. Then he walked over to the coffin and he touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, Jesus said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up, and the dead boy began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept over the crowd. And together they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. This is the gospel of our Lord. To thee, O Christ. Please be seated. It's that verse, and the news about Jesus, the gossip about Jesus, the word about Jesus spread throughout all of Judea and the surrounding countryside. And as you listen to today's sermon and as the Word of God begins to speak to your heart and mind, the sermon is titled, Jesus is the Talk of the Town. Come, Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and like the gentle rain that we have experienced in this area the last day or week, send now a soaking rain into our lives so that our hearts will be aflamed in telling the news about Jesus and his work of raising me from the dead. For I pray this in your name. Amen. You know, one of the things about small villages, whether you're from Ohatton or whether you're from New Norway, whether you're from Balfe, whether you're from Hay Lakes, or whether Nick and Dasha, you come from the village of Zara, not many people, 1,000 people, or whether you're from a small town like Bashaw, Daysland, Killam, or whether you live in a city the size of Camrose, Leduc, Stetler, to name just a few, all of them are notorious for spreading the news. You can't get away from it, right? If there's some event in the town, whether it's a small little thing to a middle thing to a big event, like Joe, a fire, you know, down in the east end of Camrose, we knew about it even before it hit the news because news spreads in the town really fast. Events and people become the talk. Of the, we love it. You go to Tim Hortons, no offense, Ken. You go to Wendy's, you go to McDonald's, and one of the first things that we do is we order the cup of, you know, double, double, whatever it may be, and then we say, have you heard the latest news? Did you hear about somebody, you know, doing this or that? We love to have the talk of the town. No different than in Jesus' day. People love to spread the news, especially if you lived in the small village, the small town, and of course, the juicier the event, the greater the news. Nain was a small village about the size of Zora, 1,000 people, not very large. Everybody knew everybody, aunts and uncles. You know, they used to say it was nobody's business, but you always knew that it was everybody's business, you know? And so on this particular day, and there's no mention of when it was, there was a funeral going through the village, and there was a large crowd coming through the village out the town gate. The village was, had a wall around it. They don't like to bury people in, in walled cities, so they went out to the cemetery. And meeting this large crowd was Jesus and his entourage. Imagine, two large groups meeting together. 
Jesus had no idea that there was a funeral. He wasn't invited to the funeral. He just happened to be there with his disciples and the large crowd that was following him. Please note, remember, 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 the Holy Spirit is always using life circumstances to teach. And you can't say to the Holy Spirit, oh, well, by the way, maybe you should use this event and not this event. You know, it doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit is leading Jesus and he's always using events right then and there to teach people about what it means that the kingdom of God is now at hand. Imagine a funeral procession, right? There's the mom leading the procession. There's the casket. It's already wrapped. The body's already covered. The, all, the body's already dead. Let's make it very clear. The body is dead. You know, people are singing. People are wailing. You've got people mourning. Oh, the guy's dead. Oh, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. It's taking place in the village. And on the way... Jesus comes. He's moved to compassion. He's moved to great sorrow as he looks at this mother and the loss of her only child, a guy. You know, how is she going to live in the village? My boy took care of me. You know, we, we don't know all the reasons why Jesus is moved to compassion, but he's moved to compassion. And then he does this amazing thing. He goes to the coffin. <laughs> Imagine, goes to the coffin. It says here in this text, he touches it. Another translation says, he leans over the coffin. Imagine, who is this uninvited guest? Who is this person that just happens to come in the village, stops the procession, and then says this word? Don't be alarmed, mom. Your boy's not dead. Don't be alarmed, people. This isn't a funeral procession. The guy's just sleeping. And then he says to this corpse, get up. <laughs> sure, tell us another one. Get up, I say. It's the same word for resurrection. Be resurrected. Get up. What would you do? What would you think if you were the mom? Oh, sure. Tell me another one, right? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm really going to believe that my son is, my, you know, is dead, is going to get up. What does the text say? What does the text say? The boy. Tom, what does the text say? He started talking. He started talking. Get me untied, please. This is really stuffy in here. Get me untied, you know. I need to get my arms out. Oh, yeah, thank you. You know, and off he comes, the whole thing, you know, like Jesus was wrapped. Here he is, he's literally before his mom being unraveled, unwrapped, getting up, beginning to speak, hi mom, you wouldn't believe what just happened to me. And I'm sure his mother is thinking, you wouldn't believe what just happened to me right now. And then, it's amazing, she didn't drop dead right then and there, right? And then it says, Jesus handed him over to his mother, right? Now the talk of the town really begins. Wouldn't you have, wouldn't you think that, you know, gossip would just begin to go crazy at this point? Did you hear the latest? Did you see the latest? You can't believe what I, I was at this such and such a funeral, and you wouldn't believe what went on. Imagine the stories. You know, a large crowd, 50 people, 50 different perspectives. I was there. I was the first witness. I saw the guy's finger move, you know, latest news broadcast. What was their focus? Was, was the focus centered on the boy getting up, the man getting up, someone untying him? Was the focus on the first words that the guy said? You know, what were the words that he said? Hello, mom, this is your son. Would you call this a sensational miracle? You know? Oh, yeah, we have a lot of these every day, you know, in the village of Nan, you know, they're just common, right? Or wouldn't it be kind of sensational in your opinion? Imagine what the villagers were thinking. Eye grabbing, mouth dropping. How many would think that the people were like this? You know? I think the whole village was like just, I can't believe what I'm seeing right before my very eyes. 
And people would say in the whispering of the story that this is the miracle. Did you see it? Otto, did you see that guy get up? Where were you? My goodness. Sandra, did you see the, the expression on the mom, you know? This is what would be the center, probably, of our conversation. Until you actually took a breath, took a step back. I got to be careful here. I'll fall off the pulpit. You know? You take a step back, you take another look, and I bet you the village began to go, uh-oh. I bet you the village began to really go, we have a problem in our midst. I bet you the villagers began to be stirred. It says, the crowd was filled with great fear. You know, it is not fear of something new. It was they were downright scared. You know, this joy turns into fear into their midst. How could this be? How could this be? Until you realize that the miracle is not this man who on the pallet is getting up and being raised and speaking, that's really not the miracle. And if you think it is, you better have eyes to see and ears to hear. You know, the miracle is about Jesus. Here is a guy who has the power to give back life to people. Are you catching it? Here is someone in our midst who looks like us, eats like us, talks like us, walks amongst this earth like us, and his very word can give life to dead people? How do you feel about that, brothers and sisters? How would you feel if you knew that Pastor Greg, his very word could not only give life, but guess what? His very word could take life. How would you feel knowing that I had the power over you to give you life or to end your life? I bet you you would be a little bit concerned about my disposition. I bet you some of you would be a little bit nicer to me, a little bit kinder to me, a little bit more friendly to me, because you wouldn't want me to get you on my bad side. The miracle is standing right in front of them, and it's a person. God has raised a prophet. Another translation says, God has raised a miracle worker in our midst today, and his word has power. So the villagers were asking themselves, well, what do you do with him? What do you do with a guy like this? You know? How do we relate to Jesus? How do we, you know, respond to him? And that's really the challenge. That was the challenge before the village of Nain when this happened. It was the challenge before the mother when this happened. It was the challenge to the followers when this happened. How do we respond to this Jesus whose very word gives life to people? Now, unfortunately, I have to say, unfortunately, the Bible doesn't give us an answer to how the mother, even how the 
man who was raised from the dead or the villagers responded other than great fear entered them and they praised God that such a person like this existed. Don't think right away that when it says, and they praised God, that everyone was, you know, in love with Jesus, you know, like, we're going to follow you now. But it made me think, hold it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. This same Jesus whose very presence and word that gives life is right here today in your midst, standing, sitting, being with you right today. And it made me wonder, how are you responding to this miracle in your midst? What is your response to Jesus today, this very moment? knowing that he has the power to give life and the power to take life? I think it's a valid question. I think it's a valid challenge before us here at Grace as a church community. I mean, when I say this, there will be people who will say, oh, that's your faith conviction, Pastor Greg. It's not mine. I don't believe that Jesus is here today. And they will actually dismiss him they will actually say, I don't need him. They will actually deny him. They will actually believe that they can live life without the very one who gives life. And they feel very comfortable doing that. Can you imagine that? Are you willing? Are they really willing to go down life's path, life's journey like that? There will be those who will say, well, I sort of connected to Jesus, but I got to cover all my bases, you know, and sort of one foot in heaven and one foot somewhere else. But what about you? In just a moment, I'm going to ask you what you believe, or maybe I'll put it more succinctly. Who do you believe in? What is your faith conviction when I ask you, before God, in the presence of God Almighty, confess your faith now in? For those of us, then, who, moved by the Holy Spirit, utter these words, I believe in Jesus. We are saying to this person, to this miracle, I believe in you. And I believe that your word is true for me. His word that says that when we are baptized, he is the one who's present. He is the one who's bringing us out of our death, out of our crucifixion with him, and he is giving to us his new life that lives in you and in me so that it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me so that we are able to say to one another as we come on these holy grounds or other Christian holy grounds, the Lord be with you. Christ is risen. How do we know this to be true? Because here in this holy sacrament, through these holy waters in which God's word, this living word is there, that word brings us Life. It is the same Jesus who speaks this word at that altar. It isn't just bread. It isn't just wine. And even then, those wafers, it's time, taste like styrofoam cups, you know? You know, it isn't whether you kneel or stand, whether you have music or no music, whether you're at an altar rail or whether you're kneeling. You know, it isn't whether you're Lutheran or whether you're Roman Catholic or whether you're Baptist. I mean, God forbid that we hold on to these views and and particularities that can separate us. Who is present at the table? Whose body do we receive? And what does his word say to us? Take and receive. This is for the forgiveness of all your sins. That's a life-giving word. 
So why are you letting your sins get you down? You know, you know, I'm sad and sorry that you feel like you got your burden baggage, you know? But when you come to this table, that baggage is gone. You know, waste disposable unit right here. You're freed. Your sins are forgiven you. This is the living word of God for you because it comes from Jesus. And Jesus is not dead. He is alive right here doing a great miracle. It is the same word, John, Gerald, Wally. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? Letha. It's the same word that Jesus says to the thief on the cross. When death is before you, Chris, right? Oh, I hope that you'll be with me in paradise. Ah! I'm not sure if you'll be with me in paradise. Ah! I don't know where you're going to be when you die. Can you believe it? Jesus who's present, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. And you speak a word that gives me life. And what's that word? Today. This very moment. Right now. Not tomorrow, not two hours. Right now, you will be with me in paradise. You know, I am concerned, you know, I, I don't know how long I'm going to live. There are times, I'm going to start to cry here, but there are times where I wonder how it's all going to end. But I will tell you, my brothers and my sisters, I will tell you, my wife and my family, I am not afraid of that day because I know him who is not dead. I know him who is alive and his word, the life-giving word says to me as a person, Greg, today you will sit up. Today, you will join the hosts in glory and the angels in glory. And today, you will celebrate life eternal. This is the miracle. It's not what's going on. It's who's going on. It's who's acting. It's whose word we believe in. And if we at Grace can't catch that, if our eyes are so bloody focused on the events and are missing the one who's causing the events, we've missed what the miracle is all about. Our faith is not in a sign. Our faith is in the sign maker. Our faith is in Jesus, whose word is life-giving. That's the miracle. And we ask now the Holy Spirit to come, continue to come, continue to gently soak us, gently fill our hearts and our minds with his presence, gently renew our minds so it doesn't scare the daylights out of us, so that we, as you sang, Dasha, as you sang, Nick, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. We want to see Jesus. We want to hear Jesus. And as we keep him, the focus, as we continue to let him be enthused in us, then we will leave that procession, whatever it may be, that life event, whatever you're in, and we will join the crowds of history, the crowds that are presently doing it today, and we will be setting the example for our generations to come in making Jesus 
the talk of our town. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake, open our voice, open our lips, open our mind, open our lives to his presence, so that in all that we say and do, Jesus is glorified. Amen.